is calling you for that. I want you to stand for the right thing again, and that's the reading of the word of God. Turn your Bibles with me to Genesis chapter 6. I won't get on. To Genesis chapter 6, 5, and thank you. Bless you, Jesus. We're going from verse 8 to 22, and just bear with me. We're building momentum. We're growing in capacity and tenacity. We're asking for strength and we a man this morning so we can go long and hard in the presence of God. You can read with me if you find it. Say amen. amen. The amens are loud. I want to for because I'm from time <laughs> All right, so we start from verse 8. But no one found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Verse 11, the earth was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shall thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. A window shall thou make to the ark, and a cubit shall thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shall thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shall thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. For from on the earth and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant, sure. and thou shalt come into the ark, and thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shall thou bring into the ark. Jesus. Mm. And to keep them alive with thee, and they shall be male and female. Of fowls after every kind, and cattle after their kind. And every creeping thing of the earth after his kind, two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. And take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah, let's say this part together, verse 22, we'll read together. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Can we read that together one more time? Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Father, we have read a portion of your word as life and spirit. I commit my spirit to you this morning with which I serve you. Grant me the ability to speak the mysteries of God as I ought to. Bless our heart. We declare this morning that every man be prepared for word. That every man be prepared for life and for spirit. Consecrate each heart every now, even now, O God. Let everything bow before you that is unlike you. Anything that will prevent the entry of light, we declare that it shall not stand in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. All these things we tell you thanks, oh God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I was 
a way we passed a McDonald's for the Christmas holidays. And I was asking the Lord, what do you want to speak for the new year? As people of God, it's important to have a positioning for the year. Because the Lord has gone before you, so he knows how to prepare you for what is to come. So you can benefit and also protect yourself against the wiles of the enemy. Amen? So I went before him and I asked him, as I was asked to do a 10-minute spoken word, what's the word for 2024 that you want to grant to me? He said, truly, I want you to look carefully at the life of Noah. Somebody said, Noah. And many times we might go over scripture and we consider a word to be common. We can't find anything in it that would apply because we have become so familiar with the word. But when God sends you back to a word, you look beyond the realms of familiarity and ask for revelation. And revelation is when he takes you beyond the surface and he reveals to you through word what he is saying. In your human understanding, you might look and not understand. But when he equips you with his spirit, you begin to look through the eyes of God. And so as I went through the book of the, the story of Noah, and I looked through the eyes of the Holy Spirit, I recognized that all over the media, men are being men's secrets, as they would say, leaders that we look up to, right? We know about the great stories of souls. I'm not calling it, I'm not into that. But this is a year where the media is releasing, as they say, the secrets of men. And sometimes as believers, when we look up to a person and we see that they fail, we lose hope. Because we say in our hearts, if they can fail, and I looked up to them so much, what about me? I never have to, okay, good. But I come to remind somebody this morning that Jesus is the author and the finisher of your faith. It simply means that even though he would have used a man to draw you to him, he's the one whose attention you should have. It means that he started the story, he's in the middle of the story with you, and so you must finish strong with him. It doesn't matter if the prominent leaders fall, it doesn't matter if who you look up to fall, you must remember that you serve a spotless love of God.
ugly. Yes. I've never met somebody who looks so gorgeous, so handsome. But when you listen to how they speak, you say, my God, the expensive stuff on you begin to look cheap because your spirit is corrupt. Because that is a corrupt man. It doesn't matter how beautiful you look. The Bible says that he beautified the meek with salvation. And I don't know about you, but I prefer to look good on the inside and let it show on the outside. That to be beautiful on the outside. But inside I am rotten with unforgiveness. Inside I am rotten with bitterness. Inside I am rotten with wickedness. But I remember the Bible said Noah was a just man. Noah was a just man. He said that Noah walked with the living God. And it shows me that regardless of what is happening around me, it does not have to, have to happen on the inside of me. Regardless of what is happening on the outside of my household, it does Oh, let 
my God Almighty, but at least you have peace Amen. with the living God. Amen. Somebody said, Praise Jesus. Amen. And so I realized that Noah was uncompromised. Noah was strong and steadfast. Noah, Noah had a backbone. And I said, God, the, 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 the three descriptions of Noah started with Noah walking with God. And then the Bible says this. It says that how can to walk unless they are free? And so since Noah was in agreement with God, Noah would naturally be in disagreement with man. Yes. Noah did not walk uncorrupted because he was trying to walk uncorrupted. Yes. He wasn't walking uncorrupted because he was forcing to be different. He became uncorrupted. He stood up because he started to agree with God. Yes. I wonder if you understand. Yes. So we're not forcing ourselves to be different and to separate. And we say, oh, people see they're not a Christian. But we are getting to a place where we're in agreement with the living God. Yes. And I found it to be interesting that the Bible did not say God walked with Noah. <laughs> the Bible said that
are one of those, say, Lord, employ me. Say, Lord, employ me for your kingdom. Employ me for your work. I want to be a light. Come on, tell him like you mean it. He's searching for incorruptible men, employees in 2024. He's searching for men this year who can walk with him. He's searching for men this year who can spread the business name. He's searching for men this year who can highlight of God in the land of the living. He's searching for men who are willing to be employees. Mm. And so, as I came over into 2024, Noah was an employee who had backbone. Noah's mind was set on one thing. Noah had a mind that was steadfast. And many times as believers, that's where the battle is. If we're supposed to go into a time of fasting, it is so difficult because of the mind. The body can endure up to 21 days. That's what I'm saying, 40 days. Some people can go that far without water if you don't have any certain illnesses. The body can go up to three days for sure. But yet, when it comes down to the mind, the mind is telling you that go and eat or go to collapse. The Bible says, work on peace, peace and bread. The mind, because it might turn over. I have been getting buried up on fasting. Jesus Christ. The mind is difficult to conquer. The Bible said that Jesus Christ was, was, he was content, set aside by the Holy Spirit in the wilderness. And the enemy came to question him about the things of God. Some writers said that the enemy did not literally present himself. But he was speaking to the mind of Jesus. He was trying to twist the mind of Jesus. But I must implore the church this morning that if you are going to be a good emperor,
in the earth who will give you any other kind of riches. God is observing the way you treat your work, your workplace. He's observing your overall approach to life before he grants you a new step. That's why the Bible says that as he looked upon Noah's life and realized that this one, I can trust him. So I'm now giving him the instruction to build the ark. There are some people in here, God is calling you to do a work for him, but you're not disciplined as yet. Lord God, come somebody and say, get disciplined in 2024. Stop the sleeping man. Stop it. Back on the slumber, Get disciplined because I want to give you a work. But I'm looking at your patterns. And when I look at your patterns, I know that you will not complete the job. Get the job done. My God Almighty, get the job done this morning. My God. So I'm imploring you this morning, people of God. The way that you watch over your affairs. The way that you deal with your children. The way that you walk and you talk. The Lord is watching over you, your patterns. He called David because he said, this is a shepherd, I can call him. Because he has training. I see the work ethic. God is looking at the work ethic, you know. Not just in serving in church, but in everything that you do. He's observing an excellent people. Because he has a building for you to do. He has an instruction. But he wants to know that you can finish the job. He wants to know that you can press the end. When nobody else is there and you are lonely, can you do it alone? My life feels lonely sometimes. I can't say it enough. But I thank God because I'm looking for a deeper reward. Paul tell Timothy, Timothy, I want you to fight a good warfare. For what? The prophecies that were spoken over you. You think I'm standing before you because I want to, but there are prophecies done before me. Men have spoken and the word has spoken over me. So I'm looking towards that reward. I cannot let the enemy win. I need somebody this morning to make up in their minds that I cannot make the enemy win by allowing my flesh to lead the way. But I must be alive with God. Amen. Make up in your mind today. That's the word in order to be incorruptible. My God. And so, Matthew 24, 45 to 47 says, Who then is faithful and wise, whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his whole soul, to give them their food at their proper time? It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. Truly I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. I want to put him in charge. I want to give you authority. But I need it to, we can't take it even out. We can't take it out. We can't take it in and out. The Bible said a, a, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Would you trust a double-minded man? No. Tell the truth. Would you, in God's position, give something that means something to you and put it in the hands of an unstable man? No. Nobody's going to do that who is wise. But he's looking for your pattern. Let us soul go up from heaven. If you're gonna pray at six every day, pray at six every day. Give him a consistent pattern. Let him know that in my prayer time, you can reveal to me deeper things now. Because I have a pattern before you. If you say you're going to fast, don't say, Lord God, never remember. Remind yourself that you're fasting. Let there be a soul that goes up to God. That when I look in the earth, I saw a woman who came up before me. God was looking around. We want you to cry every day. The Bible said that the woman we regard the, 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 the judge said, Lady, because of your impactunity, you give what you ask for, you're persistent. Yeah, bada bada me. Lady, you're in your ears every day. God is looking for those persons whose soul is going up. And you're bothering God, not just in prayer, but the life that you're living. You're consistently saying no to the things that are not of God. You know, say no today and give it tomorrow. No, I'm putting down my foot. Stand up in the house of God. I'm coming to a close. I love to pray. I love prayer. I love prayer. And I'm having to find a balance. No, I'm pushing for words as I pray. But you need word to pray. Because when you ask God, God answers his word, not yours. 
there are some principles that we must learn. And the Bible said that Noah walked in agreement with God, which means that Noah walked according to the Spirit of God. We cannot please God according to our way, no. The Bible said that with Cain and Abel, God said to Cain, Cain, I told you the type of sacrifice to give. And when your brother came through with that sacrifice, you began to grudge your brother. But Cain, I told you what kind of sacrifice I want. There is a principle in the realm of the spirit that speaks to God. God answers to sacrifice. If God is a, 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 a sacrifice of a broken and a contrite heart, I cannot refuse it. Sacrifice sends a song into the spirit. Sacrifice beckons to the presence of God. And that is why Noah got the attention of God because Noah made sacrifices for God. You can't work your way, you have to make a sacrifice. You're alone, but I'm making a sacrifice because I want God to answer me. The Bible said something very strong about Samuel. It said that every word that Samuel spoke, none fell to the ground. Can you imagine? As you walk up, can I answer? Because you're in the aroma, you're caught up in the presence of God. You are in agreement with God. The lady said, no, we should wash on jelly bag. Real man of man. But I want us to go in prayer. And I'll end on this note. The Bible said that Noah was a righteous man. And I want to leave you with a very critical component of being that person who is incorruptible. Mm. To be just or righteous means that you walk by faith. So you hear me talking and you're asking yourself, I want to do it, but how can I? Somebody said by faith. Yes. And I'm going to simply break down what faith is. You know Hebrews 11, one, right? For no, faith is the of the Lord. No, faith is the of of things hold far, the evidence of things not seen. So no, faith is the substance of things hold for, the evidence of things not seen. So I looked at the word substance. And substance is talking about having a title deed. We know what a title deed is, right? So when you go to get a loan, and the loan officer says to you, I need to know that you have some ownership that is at the same amount as the loan. They don't necessarily need you to bring the host to the loan place, but they ask you for the piece of paper. So they ask you for the document, and this document is what you call the deed, the title deed. No, faith is a title deed, follow me, of the things hope for. When you look at the word hope, the word hope means vision, and that vision is from the word of God. So faith is not abstract. Faith is according to the word of God. When I further look at the word hope, it means something that is divinely guaranteed. It means something that God has said. It means something that I'm standing with God with. So watch me. Faith is in titling of what God said.
own yet. If you rough now, the, the blessing does start manifesting. What God said has to come to the present. But Noah said, I have a title deed. Because God told me that rain is coming. Jesus Christ. God told me that in 2024, he's giving instructions to the incorruptible. And you might check me back next week and say, when God said, I'm saying, no, no, wait. You might check me back and say, children, you're clear to you say, you're incorruptible. The enemy will come and question you. And say, where are you all there? You're clear to you, good employee. Say, enemy, me no see it yet, but I have a title deed. Me no see it yet, but I have a word. The promise no manifest yet, but God told me something. It's the same faith that saved you. You see, my grace, my faith through grace. Did you know that Jesus Christ will make you different? No, but you are convicted when the minister speak. I say, I have a title here, I'm going to come to God. So guess what no one know? I have a title here, but we have to ask some stuff sweet. Because people don't work this one. Then. So now I say, God promised him a salary. So we have the title D. It is divinely guaranteed. So guess what we are going to do? We are going to build the ark. Build the ark. Become disciplined. Come with the Jesus again. Turn on my people, people. Let me tell you something. I've heard something so powerful about people. They are not consistent. But God has always been, I mean, I say because of cliche. But God has always been consistent. So I want to encourage somebody this morning. Hold up your hand and say, Lord, I'm coming back. Remind me when my back is against the wall of your title deed. Remind me when my back is against the wall of that which is divinely guaranteed. Remind me, Lord, that I'm the head and not the tail. Remind me, Lord, that I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. Remind me, Lord, because you said, if I confess my sins, you are faithful and just to cleanse me from all my sins. Remind me, Lord, because David said, you keep my feet from
that we will be able to stand on what you said. We'll be able to see what you said. Father, grant us eyes to see beyond the natural. Grant us eyes to see as we walk by faith in you. We tell you thanks, we bless you, that your word has gone forth. We declare that it will bring forth 100 times this fold from this moment on until. We thank you, we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.